Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 41. In this video, we're going to learn about adding and subtracting decimals. All right, for the lesson objective for today, we want to learn how to add and subtract decimals. And this is something where we can kind of just jump right in. It's really, really easy to add and subtract decimals, especially if you've already mastered vertical addition and vertical subtraction. So to add or subtract decimals, basically all we want to do is write the numbers vertically and line up the decimal points. So you recall when we did multi-digit addition or multi-digit subtraction, meaning vertical addition or vertical subtraction with whole numbers, we stacked the numbers on top of each other and we line them up by place value. Well, it's no different here. We just need to make sure that we line up the decimal points when we stack our numbers on top of each other. The next thing we want to do is bring the decimal point directly down into the answer. So just go straight down, don't deviate. Then lastly, we're going to add or subtract starting with the rightmost column and working your way to the left. So just like we did, again, with vertical addition or vertical subtraction. So for the first problem, we have 0 0.17, which is basically 0 0.17, plus 0 0.3, which is 0.3. Remember, these zeros here don't add any value to the number. We just kind of write them to make it clear that we have some decimal points. So I can just write point one seven on top of point three and put my addition sign out here and my horizontal line and I am ready to add. Now for some people it makes them more comfortable to have the same number of digits when they're adding. So remember that if you have something like point three or point three zero it still has a value of point three. Right after a decimal point when I have a non-zero number like three. After that number, I can put as many zeros as I want and I won't change the value. So I could keep putting zeros if I want. It's still going to be 0.3. So with that being said, I can write a zero in here and then I can start my addition. Remember, we always start at the rightmost column and we work to the left. So I would do seven plus zero, that's seven. Then move to the left. One plus three is four. And then I told you in the lesson to bring this down to start. It really doesn't matter when you do it. It's just a matter of remembering to do it. And when you first kind of start working with decimals, sometimes people will forget. They'll just go, okay, the answer is 47. Just make sure that at some point in this procedure, you bring that decimal point straight down into your answer. And so we're going to end up with 0.47. Or again, for clarity, if we want to, we can write 0.47, right? There's no change in the value of that number. All right, for the next one, we have 72.65 minus 31.521. So again, you're just going to stack these numbers on top of each other. So 72.65, that has to go on top because remember, with subtraction, it's not commutative. And then on the bottom, you're going to have 31 point, notice how I'm lining up the decimal points, 5, 2, 1. Okay, so I'm going to write a horizontal line and then my subtraction symbol. And now I'm ready to go. Well, let me go ahead and put the decimal point down. And again, you can do this at any time. I know in the procedure I put that you do it before you start your operation. Really, it doesn't matter. Just remember to do it. Now, when we start in our rightmost column, you're going to find that you have a problem. If I was doing addition here, if I change this to addition, I can just go ahead and bring down the one. Say, okay, I have one there and keep going. With subtraction, I need to have something that I can take one away from, right? So I need something minus one. Well, remember, I can put a zero at the end here and not change the value of the number. And I can't do zero minus one without getting a negative. So what I would do is I would just borrow. So I'd borrow from this five, this would become four, this would become 10. And now I can do 10 minus one, that's gonna give me nine. Four minus two would give me two. Six minus five would give me one. Two minus one would give me one and then seven minus three would give me four. Now, since I already put my decimal point down there, I really don't need to think about it again. I can just write this number as my answer. It's 41.129. All right, now we're gonna look at some addition with three numbers involved. So we have 0 0.8274 plus 3.6 plus 12.007. Again, just stack the numbers on top of each other. Just make sure you line up the decimal points. So I'm going to put 0.8274, I'm going to put 
0.6, and then I'm going to have 12.007. Now, this is one of the situations where you might want to put some zeros in so that you have the same number of digits for everything after the decimal point. So I can put three zeros in here and a zero here. Again, I'm not changing the value of the number. So when I start my addition problem, again, I'm going to put this down here now to start so I don't forget. I have 4 plus 0 plus 0, that's 4. I have 7 plus 0 plus 7, that's 14. So put a 4 down and carry the 1. Again, just like you would if you were adding some whole numbers. Then I have 1 plus 2, that's 3. Plus 0 plus 0, that's still 3. Then I have 8 plus 6, that's 14. Plus 0 is still 14. So put a 4 down and carry the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, and I can just bring down that 1. So I get 16.4344. So let's write this up here, 16.4344. So what if we have some negatives involved? Well, really, we just kind of use the rules that we used when we added integers together. Just figure out what the sign's going to be first. So we have a negative plus another negative. That's going to give me a negative. And then we can kind of just work with the absolute values. So I can think about 6.13 plus 7.85. So now I would just start in the rightmost column and work my way to the left. 3 plus 5 is 8. 1 plus 8 is 9. And 6 plus 7 is 13. And again, notice how I forgot to bring my decimal point down. So if I wrote 1,398, obviously I would get the wrong answer. So you got to make sure that you bring this down at some point and put it there to where we know we have 13.98 as the answer. Now drag this back up here and put it next to that negative to say we have negative 13.98 as our answer. All right, for the next one, I have negative 7.21 plus 3.64. So just think about the fact that if I was adding negative 7 and 3, what would I do here? Well, again, I would use the sign from the number with the larger absolute value. If I kind of get rid of this negative here and think about both numbers as if they were positive, 7.21 would be larger. So we're going to use its sign, right? Its sign is negative. And now we're going to do a subtraction. We're going to take 7.21 and we're going to subtract away 3.64. And let me go ahead and just write this down here before I start, so I don't forget like I did in the last problem. So we'll borrow from the 2. It will become a 1. This will become 11. 11 minus 4 is 7. Then I'd have 1 minus 6. I need to borrow again. So borrow from the 7. This becomes 6. This becomes 11. 11 minus 6 is now 5. And then 6 minus 3 is 3. So we get 3.57. Drag that up there and attach the negative to it. And my answer is going to be negative 3.57. Okay, for the next one, we have 128.209 minus 34.55813. So again, just stack the numbers on top of each other. Because of subtraction, this 128.209 has to go on top. And then 34.55813 is going to go on the bottom. Put my minus sign out here and my horizontal line, and I'm going to bring down my decimal point. Now again, we have a problem because when we go to start subtracting in the rightmost column, I don't have anything to subtract 3 away from. Again, when you have this situation, remember you can put zeros here to kind of fill in these spaces. You're not adding any value to the number, right? It's the same number as it was. And now I can go through and borrow. But I have to go and borrow from the 9. 9 becomes 8. This is going to become 10. Then I'll borrow from the 10. 10 becomes 9. And this 0 becomes 10. So now I can start cranking this out. 10 minus 3 is going to give me 7. 9 minus 1 is going to give me 8. 8 minus 8 is going to give me 0. Now I have 0 minus 5, so I need to borrow. So I'm going to cross this 2 out and put a 1. This 0 become 10. 10 minus 5 will give me 5. And now I have a 1 over here, so I need to borrow again. This 8 will become 7. This 1 will become 11. 11 minus 5 is 6. Then I'll have 7 minus 4. That's 3. I need to borrow one last time. So I'll borrow from the 1. It will become 0. 
This will become 12. 12 minus 3 is 9. So we end up with 93.65087. So 93.65087. All right, now we have addition and subtraction mixed. So I have 0 0.685 plus 0 0.312 minus 5.24 minus a negative 7.035. So the first thing I want you to do is just rewrite this. We have 0 0.685 plus 0 0.312 minus 5.24 minus a negative is plus a positive. So I'm going to put plus positive 7.035. So even though we're not working with integers anymore, we have some decimals involved, the same rules are going to apply. If I'm subtracting away a negative, I'm adding a positive. So I'm just going to work left to right here. And I'm going to start out with 0.685 plus 0.312. Bring down the decimal point. 5 plus 2 is 7. 8 plus 1 is 9. 6 plus 3 is 9. So we get 0.997. So I'm going to put equals 0.997. Let me just put a zero out here just for clarity. So that took care of those two. And then I'm subtracting away 5.24 and I'm adding 7.035. So the next thing I'm going to do is 0.997 minus 5.24. So let me write this over here. 5.24. So because this is going to result in a negative, when I do this subtraction, kind of the easy way to do this would be to reorder everything. Just think about having 0.997 plus a negative 5.24. What would we do in this situation? Well, we know that the answer would be negative. And then what we do is we would just think about the absolute values for a second. Then we would subtract 5.24 minus 0.997. So I'm going to put a zero here to start. Again, that doesn't add any value to the number. And I'm going to borrow from this 4. This will become 3. And then this is going to become 10. 10 minus 7 is 3. I have a 3 minus 9, so I need to borrow again. So I'm going to borrow from the 2. It becomes 1. This becomes 13. 13 minus 9 is 4. Then I have 1 minus 9. I need to borrow again. This becomes 11. 11 minus 9 is 2. Again, I forgot to bring down my decimal point when I started. But again, as long as you remember to do it, at some point, you'll be okay. Then lastly, I have the 4. Nothing to subtract away, so I just bring it down. And I've got 4.243. Now remember, this is negative. I already wrote my negative sign out here. So I'm going to have a negative 4.243. Okay, so there's one more operation to carry out here, and I'm just going to be adding to this 7.035. So negative plus positive, again, we think about what the sign's going to be. And 7.035 is bigger in terms of its absolute value than this negative 4.243. So our answer is going to be positive. And now we just need to subtract. So I'm going to do 7.035 minus 4.243. So 5 minus 3 is 2. So now I want to do 3 minus 4 and I need to borrow. I can't borrow from the 0, so I got to go to this 7. 7 becomes 6, the 0 becomes 10, then 9. Then finally this 3 becomes 13. 13 minus 4 is 9. Then I'm going to have 9 minus 2, that's 7. And again, I forgot to bring down my decimal point when I started. And so I bring it down now. And then I'll have 6 minus 4, that's 2. So I'm going to get a positive 2.792. So again, when you're adding and subtracting decimals, it's not really any more difficult than when you were just performing vertical addition or vertical subtraction with whole numbers. A couple of things we sprinkled in here, some negatives and some situations where we had to you know, write some zeros in, but nothing that's really too complicated.